It's 2022, and I'm still really bullish on Obsidian for my note-taking and PKM app of choice. Before we dive into why, though, because you're watching this video, I want to give you a free gift. If you head on over to thinkeffective.co slash 5Q, maybe Obsidian is not the right app for you. Maybe you haven't settled on a PKM app. But you might want to be asking yourself the right questions so that you can land on the right tool for you. Because not every tool is for every use case or for every person. So what I'm doing is I'm giving away a free lesson from the Obsidian Made Simple version 2 launch that walks through five questions to ask yourself if you're interested in finding a new or building a new PKM system. These questions are designed to help you narrow down the field to focus on the features and uses of applications so that you can actually build the system that solves the problem and not just the system that uses a tool that may be trending at the time. So head on over to thinkeffective.co slash 5Q. The link will be in the description today if you are interested in signing up to get this resource. With that, let's get into why I think Obsidian is the best PKM and note-taking app, at least for me, in 2022. So there are really six core reasons why I think Obsidian is a stellar PKM app for my use cases. Let's get into and break down each one of these. First and foremost is usable file formats. Softwares like Rome Research or Evernote, they put these documents, this information into a database. And while they can export to Markdown, even Bear, which you write in Markdown, stores things into a database, you can export them to Markdown. You just don't get the full fidelity of the file or the notes really after after that. For example, when I uh, switched to Obsidian from Rome Research, the markdown files that were exported were just literally a list of bullets, which was great, but you obviously get the data, but not really the experience that goes along with it. There's a disconnect there when you switch to a different software. What I love about Obsidian is that under the hood, it's really just a browser for your notes. You have markdown text files, PDFs, MP3s, image files, and so on that Obsidian uses and pulls into the user interface. And then when you look at those files directly on the file system, what you see is what you get. The other thing that's really important to me too is end-to-end -end encrypted sync. A lot of services make you use Dropbox, Google Drive, iCloud Drive, for example, maybe even Git to sync your notes back and forth. Those things are all right. But when I'm working with notes or ideas, um, journaling thoughts, I really want to trust my data with end-to-end -end encryption. Now, all data that's transferred on the internet these days is encrypted in transit. What end-to-end -end encrypted means is that it's encrypted when it leaves your computer. It's encrypted when it arrives at the destination so that the employees don't get access to it on their servers. And then it's also encrypted at rest on the drive, meaning the drive that stores the data in the cloud is encrypted as well. And you own the decryption keys for that. So for example, uh, with your iMessages with iCloud, they're encrypted in sync, they're encrypted at rest, but Apple owns the keys to them so they can decrypt them whenever they want to. End-to-end -end encryption means that your data is safe and secure. You can trust Obsidian's sync service to keep your data safe and secure. I also love the flexibility of the user interface with Obsidian. There really is nothing like it out there that I have found that allows you to move panes around and put things up next to each other to maybe shove a note in a sidebar. I know you can do this in Rome Research, but you can shove a note in a sidebar and it says persistent there. Um, with the knowledge graph, both the big knowledge graph and the local graph view, the user interface, I really think, adds a lot to being able to browse your notes effectively. Again, Obsidian really is just a browser for your plain text notes, but it adds so much value to the notes that you have that I really think that this flexibility is one of the key elements that makes Obsidian a long-standing player. And I know they've just released some updates to the user interface that make it easier for developers to theme as well. 
cleans up the original theme, makes it look a little bit nicer, cleaner, fresher on your devices instead of more utilitarian. And then also it allows uh, theme developers e an easier time to actually customize the user interface too um, through proper markup. Now let's move on to plugins. This is where it gets fun and it can get also a little dicey for some folks, but I think the plugin ecosystem that Obsidian has, where the application itself is closed source, but the developers have created open APIs to where you can create an open source plugin for uh, Obsidian and then allow people to use it to do extra stuff with your notes. I mean, there are some really powerful examples of this, such as the Kanban plugin, where you can take a plain text note and turn it into a Kanban board. And then you have the data view plugin where you actually use query language to search your notes and create a dynamically changing list. Incredibly ingenious, I think, and can be really powerful for navigating your vault or organizing it in a way that's not so manual. Without this plugin ecosystem, I think Obsidian's utility would still be high to be my favorite PKM app. But the plugin system, I think, really just took things to the next level for me. Now, this is an interesting one because I've had um, a lot of thoughts on this recently. But so many applications, I mean, MEM is one that I can think of that I recently took a look at. Even Craft, Notion, none of these apps are really have been built with the individual in mind. But with Obsidian... It really was built for solo use as a solo individual that's using it. I love the fact that I don't have to get bombarded with, hey, have you tried this new team tool? Or hey, can you uh, upgrade to this to get this new team sharing feature or whatever it is that the softwares are offering to try to convert me from a free user to a paid user? I happily pay for Obsidian. I happily have contributed to the developers because they're building something of value something that I personally can see that there is value to, and it's built for me. Like, I mean, not directly for me, obviously, but it's built for me as an individual. I don't have to worry about this SaaS business use case of them heavily trending towards wanting to, this to get adopted by businesses and teams for use. Obsidian is built for individuals. Now, I know they're working on some collaboration features inside of Obsidian Sync, but that seems like an add-on that was asked for from the community uh, versus something that was driven as part of a business model decision from the company. So I think that really fits better into what Obsidian really is. And then lastly, Overall, Obsidian is just darn powerful. The knowledge graph, I think, is what initially drew me into it, but being able to organize your notes lightly and then link them heavily, I think adds a ton of power to any PKM system. I'll get into it in another video in the future on my exact workflow inside of Obsidian where you can see my folder layout. But really, my workflow is super simple inside of there. I really organize lightly, work very heavily off of links. I love using the local graph view because it allows me to make connections between individual ideas so much easier. I can start to see a big picture of how things might be connected together. But then more importantly, it allows me to pull in highlights from a tool like Readwise into the app and allows me to process on them and work on them and transform them into other things. One thing I've noticed since using my Obsidian in my workflow is that I am more aware of the things that I am learning because I have a place to intentionally engage with them. So with that, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button because it really does help other people find and discover this kind of content. And again, I wanna remind you of the free video from Obsidian Made Simple version two that is available at thinkeffective.co slash 5Q. It's the five questions to ask yourself if you're looking to build a PKM app and choose the right app for yourself. Be sure to check that one out. Again, my name is Justin with Effective. Thanks for watching this video. I will catch you in the next one, but until then, stay effective in the meantime. Take care.